On June 13, 1971, President Richard Nixon found his administration in an uncomfortable position. Right, well, Monday afternoon, officially, well, let's wait till then, fine. Okay. Nothing else of interest in the world? Yes, today? sir. Very significant, this uh, goddamn New York Times expose of the most highly classified documents of the war. Oh, that. I see. That, that, I didn't read the story, but uh, you mean that, that was leaked out of the Pentagon? The New York Times had begun publishing a trove of secret documents called the Pentagon Papers, exposing how president after president had misled the American people about their country's role in escalating the Vietnam War. What in the world is it, do responsible publishers think about to put out tr trunk loads of secret documents? It's getting, it's getting waste every day. It's awful, isn't it? The lawyers who represented the Times had already given dire warning that publication could subject them to uh, prosecution under the Espionage Act, that they could lose their television licenses, that the publisher could go to jail, uh, all said with a very high level of intensity. But the Times refused to stop publication, saying the American people had the right to know the hidden calculations behind the war. Nixon turned to the courts to stop them. Right to know. That's, of course, a goddamn code word, right to know. The public has no right to know secret documents. What the Times has done is placed itself above the law. They, they filed a lawsuit asking a, uh, a federal judge to enter an order uh, barring the New York Times from publishing uh, any more of the Pentagon papers than they had already. They got to court after two days of publication it was very unusual for the government to go to court to uh, try to stop publication of anything. But the idea of uh, the government going to court uh, with respect to an ongoing news story was uh, all but unknown. For Nixon, the case was about more than stopping a leak. He wanted to undercut the press. Let's make something out of it. It's an opportunity. This issue must listen, the New York Times, believe me, the New York Times can be discredited for uh, in, uh, indefinitely as a result of this. In fact, I'm going to. There's more at stake in this debate than one newspaper series or even one major breach of security. Sooner or later, we can expect this issue to come before the Supreme Court, and the question there will be the role of the press in a democracy. The answer came quickly. In New York Times Company versus United States, the Supreme Court ruled six to three that the Nixon administration did not have sufficient cause to justify prior restraint, meaning it had failed to show that publishing classified documents would cause imminent harm and that attempting to stop publication was a violation of the First Amendment protection for freedom of the press. At its core, the Pentagon Papers case is a prior restraint case, a case against allowing the government to stop speech in its tracks. It was very embarrassing for President Nixon to have gone to court and lost and have the Supreme Court write an opinion vindicating the, the press that he hated so much. But Nixon wasn't finished. I just say that we've got to keep our eye on the main ball, the main ball's Ellsberg. We got to get this son of a bitch. Using a World War I statute meant to punish spies, Nixon's Justice Department indicted Daniel Ellsberg, the military analyst responsible for leaking the Pentagon Papers to the Times. I was tried for a violation of what is commonly described as the Espionage Act because it's usually used for espionage. But uh, I was tried under it for a non-espionage uh, offense. It was a novel use of the law because, unlike a spy, Ellsberg's intention was not to help a foreign government. He wanted to reveal the truth about the Vietnam War to the American people. Daniel Ellsberg says he leaked the Pentagon Papers because the government lied and concealed facts about the Vietnam War. We won't stop the killing, but this trial will inform the American public in ways that it's never heard before of how we've been governed in the past quarter century and what censorship and deception do to a democracy. I'm not for espionage, Harden. I don't know anyone who is. And I'm not against criminalizing that. The question is, should it be criminal to 
to inform your fellow citizens of things that, on the face, they ought to know. That question was left unanswered as the Watergate scandal enveloped the Nixon administration. The president said that in 1971, he formed an investigative unit inside the White House to fight what he called national security leaks. One of the first things the people in that unit did was to burglarize the offices of Daniel Ellsberg's psychiatrist. With Watergate breaking out and with the revelation of the crimes they'd taken against me, by an almost miraculous set of events, my charges were dismissed. But in the decades that followed, other presidents sometimes turned to the Espionage Act as they waged their own battles against leaks to the press. What's been your biggest disappointment? The inability to control the, the leaks. I think the District of Columbia is one giant ear. I don't appreciate those who leak classified documents. If we can root out folks, who have leaked, uh, they will suffer consequences. During the Obama administration, eight people were charged with violating the Espionage Act for sharing government secrets with the press, more than all previous administrations combined. Matthew Miller was a senior official in the Obama Justice Department. If you look the other way, then you only encourage other people to leak national security secrets. You do have to show that there are consequences for leaking information that could harm national security. And the only way to do that is to prosecute some of the individuals responsible for the most egregious leaks. There are secrets that need to remain secret. Miller says that keeping secrets secret became more challenging in the digital age. Massive leaks of classified information by Edward Snowden and WikiLeaks showed how vulnerable secrets had become. We begin tonight with that mountain of secret wartime information exposed in the press today. More documents than the Pentagon Papers during Vietnam. But in trying to control leaks, Obama had moved into territory that other presidents had largely avoided. I'm sitting at my desk and I get an email that looks like it's from the Department of Justice. I'm not sure what it is. And I look at Matt and I said, Matt, it, it, what is this? Is this spam? And I said, it's not spam. Government just took our phone records. In May of 2013, former Associated Press reporters Matt Apuzzo and Adam Goldman learned that the government had seized their phone records during an investigation into who leaked details of a CIA operation in Yemen. The dragnet scooped up records from phones used by more than 100 reporters and editors. One thing we heard again and again from prosecutors was, well, of course we took the phone records for your editors and your colleagues and your bureaus and swept everybody up because that's exactly how we would investigate a, a gang. Well, we're not a gang. We, you know, we're a newsroom and, you know, the, the right to deal drugs isn't in the Constitution. So there should be a recognition that what happens in the news gathering process is a little different. It felt like it was just an investigation intended to send the message, don't talk to reporters. Yeah. It, it had the desired effect. In the case of a classified leak to Fox News, the Obama Justice Department went so far as to imply that correspondent James Rosen, because of his reporting, could be charged with a crime. In court papers, an FBI agent said Rosen asked, solicited, and encouraged a source to give him sensitive information about North Korea and that he was a possible co-conspirator for violations of the Espionage Act. Not till that moment had the United States government uh, ever characterized the behavior of a journalist as being that of a co-conspirator to a crime for asking questions about the government policy. Rosen was never charged, and following an outcry by news organizations, the Obama administration reined in some of the more aggressive tactics used to obtain journalists' records. We must enforce consequences for those who break the law. But a free press is also essential for our democracy. That's who we are. And I'm troubled by the possibility that leak investigations may chill the investigative journalism that holds government accountable. While there's a necessity to protect national security, there is also an enormous need for an informed public. And so while, you know, one can justify uh, certain prosecutions of leakers. The risk of them is that it does provide a roadmap for a hostile administration to really try to bring the press down. Your organization's terrible. 
Your organization's terrible. Let's go. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. You are fake news. After his election, President Donald Trump aggressively ramped up the use of law enforcement to attack leaks. We're going to find the leakers. <laughs> They're going to pay a big price for leaking. As part of a larger war. I think the media is the opposition party. Against the press. The press has become so dishonest that if we don't talk about it, we are doing a tremendous disservice to the American people. During his administration, at least six people were charged with violations under the Espionage Act, including Julian Assange from WikiLeaks. But in investigating leaked cases, it secretly obtained hundreds of phone records of reporters and cast a wider net than ever before. Prosecutors subpoenaed Apple for data from the accounts of at least two Democrats on the House Intelligence Committee, aides and family members. One was a minor. I think in this day and age, the value of the unofficial story, the story that has not been sanctioned by the government, that value is greater than it's ever been. President Biden, who is continuing the prosecution of Julian Assange, has signaled that his administration won't allow reporters' phone records to be seized. Having lived through the Nixon administration, Daniel Ellsberg knows how dangerous the abuse of the Espionage Act can be. He says it's critical that no president is given the power to dictate the truth. Can you really have democracy in a real sense with the government having the final voice and the total voice as to what citizens shall know about what they're doing and whether they're telling the truth and whether they're obeying the law. I would say no. If they have the last word and if citizens can only know what the government tells them, it's a mockery of a democracy.